welcome back to another episode of Agravian Skies 2. I've expanded a little bit out here today and I've got myself uh, a few more rotary blades on here and it's spinning uber fast. There's lots going on. I've got a, a decent output of energy. Uh, my steam, man, I can't take any more steam. The maximum flow rate is 2,000 mega buckets per ticket. Uh, per tick. Per ticket? Per tick. And the maximum 2,000 coming in is all I can put in without it. Well, it, it just, it's not slowing down. The rotor speed just refuses to slow down. It won't slow. It's going too fast. I need to make it slow down because if this runs too long over, over the speed like that, then it's going to go boom or something nasty. So I keep deactivating it and putting it down. But just look at how much RF per tick we're making. Absolutely thousands of RF per tick. And that's just filling up this energy so fast, right? I've now got it so that it's just literally outputting onto some Tesseracts. I've got four Tesseracts that it's outputting onto, all on the same channel currently. But that just means that I can send it flying all over the place. Um, wait, we've got... We've got... A good reactor there, but I still need to slow the rotor speed down. I need to figure out how to slow the speed down. I've got maxed out. I'm so maxed out. This this doesn't now doesn't need anything else now. I've got 2,000 millibuckets per tick coming out of there. Just from these four here with four, four world action, world interaction, 12 world interaction to make it an 8,000 megabucket per tick, basically. Traveling from there into there. 8,000 mega pockets per tick. I think the stack upgrade may even increase that to make it like 16,000. But at least we've got 32,000 mega pockets per tick going in there. And this can only hold 21,000 mega pockets. So if it used up all 21,000 uh, 21, water every tick, it will automatically be instantly replaced every tick as well. Which means that we've got a maximum steam coming out. It's fascinating, I know. It's riveting, riveting, entertaining stuff. But I haven't got it into this sweet spot yet. I've got to get this sweet spot where I can just leave it to run constantly instead of needing to worry uh, and turn it off. It, it can be bigger, it can be larger, we can do more things with it. But I want to see what we can get out of it. At the minute though, it's doing just fine. Tons and tons of energy. I may just have some uh, applied energistics energy cells in a cube somewhere and start doing something like that. Uh, but today, we're going to be looking at something else instead. Today, I want to go into another dimension. We've got one of the quests that takes us into another dimension. Uh, both of these quests are extra utilities dimensions. We've got... Uh, where is it? The deep dark is in here and also there's another dimension as well that we're going to look at. But I've been to the deep dark before, and I know that I need to make a huge cobblestone generator. There we go. A portal to the deep dark. I need to make a cobblestone gen to make quadruple compressed cobblestone. It's easy done, but I need to do it. So I haven't done it yet. It's going to take 59,000 cobblestone per block uh, for that one. And 6,500 cobblestone per block for that one. At the minute, I've got um, a... A full barrel of cobblestone sitting somewhere so I can do that I can do that quite easily but the other one that we've got is this portal to the last millennium and I've never seen it I've never been through it I don't know what it does but we've got things like a, a clock which we can make we've got things like burnt quartz which we can make so I can make a, a quartz block how many did I need I needed four quartz blocks so let's let's just quickly make some quartz blocks i only need four. One, two, three, four, and i need to burn it and that's easy enough done as well pop that into there i think that's all you have to do four burnt quartz there we go and then we also need these carved eminent stones which require some purple dye of some kind purple and magenta purple and magenta dye ender pearls and stone now, I should have the majority of what I need, but the purple and magenta dye was the thing that I was thinking maybe it wouldn't work. But we only actually need four, so we've made four. And that was it, one magenta dye, just enough to make it. And then put those into there like that, get the clock. 
Uh, there we go, that's the clock, and then we get the burnt quartz. Easy enough to make this in comparison to the deep dark, but is it going to be a place that I can return to? So uh, what I've done is I've made a backup of my world save here, and I've got that. Wow, look at that, that's cool. I like the effects you get on it. Not a permanent place, this is our experimental area, just to see what things do for the first time. I'm not going to right-click on it, because I think that's probably how I transfer myself. Uh, raining, good, good. And my armour is near enough knackered down here, so I need some new armour. Uh, let's, let's quickly have a quick sleep. Let's quickly have a quick sleep. And then we get rid of the rain and make it morning. Make it day, thank you. So, another thing I want to do before we head off, I've got 39 levels as well. We've got 39 levels, so I want to make some of this enchanted fabric. Uh, we can make a few more. This should be quick enough. Let's make another stack when it gets up to 64. When it gets 64 of everything. It uses a little bit of everything for this wand. Uh, maybe, maybe actually, actually maybe. Can I do the, the making of the fabric stuff in here? No, I can't. It has to be the... The processing with a bit of viz. Okay. 64 should be enough to make us a couple of suits, though. So let's get rid of that. Let's make the suit like this. There we go. Oh, yeah, it uses a bit of air. And I'm putting these straight into here so they give the viz, viz discount on making everything else. Uh, there we go. Get the boots. You can put these into there, and they give you the same discount that you would get if you were wearing them and crafting them. Uh, that's not right. Why... Why does... Oh, there's no helm? There's no helm for it? Uh, okay, okay. We'll just make some more leggings then. I'll make some of those, put those in there. Okay, that gives us those discounts. So we've now got an extra big discount for those. So I should make myself a set of leggings. And myself a set of boots. And that really does uh, decrease the amount it's costing me there. And we're going to enchant those before we go on our adventure. And hopefully get something cool. If not, I can do things to change them around later. But we're only going for a quick look, aren't we? So let's get nine levels on there. Unbreaking Protection 4, very nice. And we're just going to get nine levels on here if we can. Nine levels, there we go. What we got? Haste 1. Not too bad. Not too bad. Okay, so my armour is near enough full right now with this. So let's take those off and put those on. And my armour's only on six bars. Six iron shirts of armour. Uh, not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, let's go die. Thank you. Alright, so <clears throat> let's put this armour in this ender chest here. Out the way. And just posit everything else into the system and go and have a look at this new realm. I'm I'm pretty scared of what may be. I've got a bit of food, actually. Let's see, can I make some more steak? Steak? No, I haven't got any more steak. I've got plenty of beef, though. Um, I want to make some more beef wellingtons and feasts, but I'm not going to do that this episode. I'm going to do something to automate that a little bit. Right, so we've got, a, we've got a little bit of food with us. That's good. We've got a little bit of food with us. Let's put all of this stuff away for now. Um, we need to keep the quest book on us. That's a good thing. And I've got my sword. I'm, I'm, I've never been here before, so I'm, I'm kind, of, kind of worried. Aren't you? Are you worried? Have you been before? Let's see. Right-clicking on it. Oh, here we go. Downloading terrain. Hey! Okay. Well, here we are. What's this, then? Uh, is it just another void world? Really? Nothing to be scared of, then. A dark void world. I see stuff up there. I have a fly up. I can fly in here, at least. Okay. Well, I don't see anything obvious around. It's kind of a cool place, though. It could be... That it's set up deliberately for Thorncraft to do a Thorncraft place. We've got a villager, the last villager. The last villager has no trades. Good job, villager, good job. So let's have a look in here. And that should be in Learning to Skyblock. 
that's visited the last millennium. Okay, there are many different dimensions available to the floor. Why not try finding some of them? The last millennium. So what do we use the last millennium for? Is there anything underneath? Is it just a, like a, a void age? Looks like it might just be a void age. A void age for doing things like making uh, Thorncraft experiments and stuff. Looks pretty cool. Some extra utilities blocks. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, that's good. We go back. I was expecting a big fight. We go back and everything's fine. We just need the world to load up a little bit. Okay, that's cool. Can I just break it like that? Yes, I can. The little particle effects are there still a little while longer, but that's cool. Uh, so, well, let the world load back in. The spider's getting stuck up there. At least it's all working up there. The amount of string I had was amazing because the spiders are dying up there and then the string falls down into the mob farm and gets carried into one of these areas where it gets sucked up by the blood magic altar. Uh, okay, well, that was that then, I guess. I was kind of expecting the whole episode to be something to do with that. That's why I made my own special armour and everything. Kind of cool. I do look kind of cool now, though, with the extra bit. Just make me look a little bit better. There are other better armours, don't worry. I'm going to be doing those as well. Um, we've got, like, the blood magic armour and the uh, terror steel armour and that from Batania. We've got some decent armours and I've got a good experience farm area. So I'm going to work on getting some sort of collections going as well as completing all the quests. I would like to set myself a little challenge of getting a collection of things. So uh, <clears throat> you can imagine what kind of things I'm going to be collecting. And not just the things that are inside this quest tree here. There's a... For the hoarder. Here we go. The hoarding stuff isn't even in there at the minute. So I will be working on something like that. I want to get all the tree types that I've got and all of that kind of stuff. All set up around the base. All the mob heads. The armory for all the different types of armor and stuff like that. But that's the long term goal. I don't know how much more of Agrarian Skies you guys can stand. But I've got some goals to achieve. And I want to go and make the most of those. Uh, got some more nodes to create. This one and this one are currently doing exceedingly well at recharging my wands. Uh, uh oh, I've got a bit there that needs destroying. I may put this portal up here actually. I may have it as another place to store things or do things. Um, top floor maybe. Up on this floor maybe. Maybe. Uh, I've got to think about where I want it. And what I want to do with it. Because I'm not I'm not really that keen on going there very often. There's nothing there. But I could I could always go there when I need like a villager trading system or something. I could maybe build a villager trader there. So I don't have villagers in this place. I could have villagers in that place. Uh, that might do it. Let's put that there. Can we do that? Yeah. And can I zip through the portal from there? Yes I can. Okay. That's cool. All right. Well, last villager. You can be the first villager. Not the last villager. I'll try and re, re good, redo a village over there and have a little portal on this level. Maybe have something around here for bits and pieces later. But let's go and find something else to do. Alrighty, well, I want to take a look at a bit of Thorncraft. I'm thinking that this Diabolus Fork and Wraith Cage and all that kind of stuff will be something really cool to play around with. The Diabolus Fork requires a Thormian Sword and Nether Quartz and Redstone. So, should be easy enough to make in the Arcane Infuser. Infernus, Mechanic and Potentia. Eight of each. Infernus. Have I got any Infernus? I've got Infernus. Yes, plenty of Infernus. Mechanicus. Yes. And what was the other one? Oh man, I'm already forgetting what I need to make. Potentia. I'm sure I've got Potentia in there. Potentia. Yeah, we've got enough Potentia. So all I need is a Thormium Sword and turn that into that. Okay. So have I got any Thormium? Thormium. I've got a Thormium Nugget. Okay, so we need to make some Thormium Swords. Uh, let's make a stack of Thormium stuff. Because I think I'm going to need some Thormium for all sorts of other bits and pieces as well in here. Uh, I'm going to do it in the Balance Shard one here. Let's go boom and make Thormium. Yes. Let's make that. There we go. Sorted. And then all I need to do is put something to make magic in there. Magic happen. 
So how much have I got in there at the minute? I've got tons, so I don't need to worry about a stack. That'll be fine. Okay, so then we need some quartz to meet. We need some quartz. So we'll get a stack of quartz and some redstone. Okay. And we need to make a thormium sword. Uh, sword. Okay, it's not there. Can I, can I get off the extra utilities now? Thank you. And make myself the thormium sword. Void metal, not quite just yet. Uh, thormium sword. There we go. It is that simple. Okay, we'll take one of those. And then, oh, the darkness. I need to do the salts as well, I think. Because I'm starting to pick up some of the research points that are going to give you bad, bad nightmares. Okay, so I think it was the sword in the middle. That's almost for definite. And then quartz, quartz, and redstone on the other side. Okay. So let's put our redstone there and our quartz there, there, and there. And then give a little tap. Um, what am I looking for? I'm looking for this. The iron wand isn't going to be big enough, is it? To start it off? It is. Okay. Okay, that's that. Job done. Should be awesome. Should be easy. Take all we need from this. Shouldn't be any problems. We should just get one of these pitchforks really quick. There we go. I think the other items that we need are going to take a little bit longer to progress. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Easy peasy. Mundane. Mundane crafting. There we go. Look at it. Oh, look at this. How cool does that look? Oh, oh, it's slightly up my arm, I suppose, but that could be worse. Stabby, stabby, stabby. Looks better in first person. Stabby, stabby. Yeah, it looks much better in first person. They always get that wrong in Minecraft, don't they? Maybe the combat update in 1.9 will sort that sort of stuff out. But there we go. That's the Diabolist Fork, which is in in food for some reason. I don't know why it's in food, but we've got that. The Wraith Cage, I think that's going to be the hardest one. The Blank Imprinting t uh, Press. That might be a little bit more difficult as well. We've got to get diamonds, I believe, to make that work. And have all of the other essences available. Uh, let's have a quick check, see what we needed for that. Uh, this. Yeah, look at this. We need four wraith shards, a block of titanium, which is... Uh, titanium? Uh, thormium, and so four warded jars, four diamonds. We also need bestia, 32 bestia, wrath, mechanicus, and precantatio. We should have both of those in. Uh, yeah, we've got plenty of that. Bestia, we've only got eight bestia. And Mechanicus, we've got plenty of that in. But the Beastia, we're going to need to get some more in. And also the the other evil one. What was it? Beastia, Ira. 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 Wrath. What could cause that then, eh? What could cause that? Uh, Infernus, Victus, Famas, uh, Itar, Telum. Tell them there as well. Tell them, tell them. Are you different? You're not different. Okay, that's good. Uh, Alienus and all those. There must be something in here that does the wrath. Uh huh. I don't see anything though. Uh no, that's it all again. That's nothing. I can't see. I can't see anything. And this has been running a fair fair amount of times. There's probably what in. Uh, was that it? Yes. So that gives me two for each and i've got two of them oh my days okay uh well that's all i've got then so what else can i get that from let's have a look in the aspects do a little research and hopefully we can get all that sorted out uh this stuff creeper heads creeper heads okay creeper heads oh that shouldn't be too hard should it how many creeper heads we got uh creeper heads eight well, it gives two each. That's not too bad. What about those? Nitros Creeper. Don't know about a Nitros Creeper yet, so let's throw that on the ground and scan it. Um, actually going to need my scanny scan. Where's my thing gone? Oh, everything's missing today. Let's put that on. There we go. And press V and select it. Oh, no, that's the illumination lens. Where's the other lens gone? Are there? No, 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 no. Oh, I'll just have to scan it the old-fashioned way then, won't I? Nitrous creeper head. No, not worth it. Okay, fine. 
Never mind, eh? Never mind. So we're going to smelt that, smelt that, and hopefully still have enough at the end of it. Um, there's got to be more stuff, but I think I needed 32 for the thing, didn't I? So let's put that in there. That in there, that in there. And we'll soon we'll soon smelt that down and get that into the system. Along with all the other little bits and pieces as well. That's cool. Okay, right, so that's that. And now have we got it building up in here? Yep, three and so on. And how many did I need? I needed quite a bit, didn't I? That was, that was quite an epic amount that I needed over there. Was that pickaxe of destruction? Sounds cool. Right, this. We needed 32. 32. Beastie and 32. So I'll get this ready for maybe next episode. And so we can start playing around with that. But in order to do this in the first place, we need these imprinting crystals. Which is Cognito and Potentia. Cognito and Potentia. We've got the Potentia, we've got Cognito, less than 20 each. Well, when we've captured somebody or something, then we put it into the crystal. Ten of each, that should be okay. Let's get Diamond. Uh, diamond, thank you. And we shall quickly make one of these up as well. And then when we make the cage, then we can put the crystal into the cage, apparently. Take that off. Thank you. Put this in. And we want a miniature red heart. No, we don't. We don't want a pride shard. We want a blank imprinting thing. Cool. And spit it in my face. Give it here. Thank you. Okay. So now, let's read up on this and check what we're like. You've created a tool that helps tinker with various infernal contraptions. The quartz prongs on the Diablo's fork allow you to attune itself to arcane energies. Along with being used to tune devices, the fork also makes it a functional weapon. More information should appear on the following pages as you uncover research. Okay. The Diabolist, the Diabolist Fork is used to slay and a compatible creature with a blank imprinting crystal in your inventory. It will imprint on the crystal. The imprinted crystal can be used to attune the Wraith Cage to that monster. The fork can also be used to adjust which Essentia type the Wraith Cage is using for fuel. Simply right-click on the Wraith Cage with the Diabolist Fork to cycle between the three different fuel types. Okay. Sounds cool enough. Uh, and then the cage and the thing. Yeah, I think we're fine. Right-click in a cage with the fork. Changes the fuel types. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So I should be able to go and kill something with this Diabolist Fork and make it into this blank imprinting press. Well, let's have a quick run around in the nether. Uh, I would like to find a wisp. <laughs> I'm still trying to find the wisp. I'm hoping that this will work in there. The infernal wisps may be okay still, but I'm still looking to find a wisp. And I may need to log out, log back in to get my mobs to spawn in the nether once again. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Doesn't seem to be much going on around here, does there? I've lost my map as well. I don't know whether I've turned it off or whether it's been taken out in an update. Uh huh. We've got pigmen, we've got imps, but we've got nothing else. All right, let me let me give a bit of a reset, and we'll see whether I get some baddies come around. Aha! I found one. Found one, found one, found one. I had to restart again, though, so I had to save and quit and come back in to be able to get mobs to spawn in the nether properly again. Uh, hostile mobs, that is. Let's see. Did I get it? No, I didn't get it. Let's do it again. Let's attack it again. He's going to try and keep you at bay. Got him, got him, got him, got him. Got his essence, anyway. So, did I get it on here? Yes. Yes! Wisp imprinted crystal. Awesome. Okay, that's a thing. That's a thing. We got a thing there. Also, killing the Nitros Creepers gave me Creeper Heads and Nitros Creepers Heads with this sword. Awesome. I think the sword may be reading that it's um, a Creeper rather than it's a particular type of Creeper or anything. And just chop it off a Creeper Head. Okay. And I'm thinking I'm back down here. Yes, I am. Okay. Alrighty. So, next up I've got to get that cage sorted out. Okay, well, there's a turn up for getting the gr uh, thing that I need to make the cage. The wraith shards themselves do the job. Just happen to have one in my inventory. 
I've thrown a load of string in there because string gave me the beastia. So I've thrown a stack of string in there to get the beastia that I need. And then next up, I'm going to throw in some of these shards. I'm going to make some wraith shards, throw them in to make some more of this. Uh, I think the wraith shards we did easily enough. Yeah, it's just TNT makes it with some of this. Yeah, we should be able to have enough. I will make the preparations and go and set off the infusion altar and be back to test out if we can do use this wraith cage and how it works. I'll have a good read. It's a dangerous one though, so I've got to be careful. Careful, careful. But I do need all of my altar in as well. Okay. I'm going to go and set it up. Alrighty. So, I came up with an idea. And I'm just going to show it to you. Because this is a dangerous procedure. Normally what happens with a dangerous procedure is lightning will shoot out and break some of the materials around the outside. Now, if the materials are easily replaceable, then that's fine. You can just put them back on and replace them. When they're not very easily replaceable, then it can completely ruin the whole infusion. Fortunately, these diamonds I've got abundance of. I've made plenty of wrath shards uh, and warded jars I've got plenty of. So what I've done is I've put hoppers on the back end here so that I've got spares in the hoppers. And I checked to make sure, because if you take, take this off, it will take them all out of there and you can just put them into the hopper and it will automatically put them onto the table which is awesome. So I've laid it out. I've got four sets for those, four sets for those, and three sets for those. Exactly the same way as it's showing in the book. Uh, near enough, I've got a space missing somewhere because this is a more circular design than my square symmetry design. Because this, they're not symmetric. They're not symmetrical, are they? But that's for the best effects. It's a dangerous one as well. And the main thing that I needed was this uh, dish stuff era and I found that that era stuff was from the shards and also from the TNT that makes the shards so uh, I managed to get a 40 in there so we should be good for this infusion now should be good I can put that on there and turn it into a cage a wrath cage okay wish me luck you always worry about the first times don't you Bang, do it. Okay, so, we've got 16, yeah, everything's going in, everything's going in, everything's all right. Just zapped a diamond off, but it got replaced automatically, because I'm a genius. Bring it on. Dangerous rituals indeed, come on. We can cope. We can cope, we can work it out. Come on, that's it. Taking out that. Good. So far, so good. Such an animation. Gotta love the Thorncraft graphics now, and you. Come on. Okay. I'm holding on just in case something goes really wrong. I want. I want you to be witness to anything that goes severely wrong. We've already lost one diamond, and it reappeared. But I got plenty in there still, so we're okay. Right now, start taking the stuff. Uh huh. It's working from around there. That should have replaced itself. Maybe it did. Maybe it did. That one. Maybe it's taking four out of the one pillar because it's auto replacing. Yes, it did. It took him straight out of that one. Oh, ow! Get off. Okay, so is it taking all three out of this? Yes, it is. Oh, wait. Right. So you only actually need one pillar with the right amount on. Oh, my days. That's something new. I didn't know. Interesting, though, isn't it? Means that if you've got, like, three ingredients, you only actually need three of these pedestals with a hopper with all the ingredients in that you need. And it'll just carry on taking it from the same pedestal. That's cool. Okay, fine. But we've got one of these wrath cages. Oh my days, I am worried about this. Okay, so let's break into this place over here. This is the place that we wanted to test it in. Uh, I want to silk touch this. Thank you. Okay, so uh, let's put this up here first before I put the cage up there. 
Uh, where were we? We were four away from here. One, two, three, four. There. One, two, three, four. Yes. Okay. Put the cage up. Looks pretty cool. All right. Let's scan it quickly. Woohoo! <laughs> Swimming in research points. Okay. And now I've got this in here. I believe I'm going to have a source of Aram around or something like that around here. Uh, let's have a quick check. Boink, boink, boink. Shift click it. Right click it. Shift click it. Right click it. Nothing's changing. What about right clicking with this? Uh, yeah, put something on. Oh, it's asking for different things like that. I right click and it can change to what I, what it wants to be. Awesome. Okay, so. Aram's probably the easiest, especially when it's a wisp that we're getting. So that might be the best thing for this one. Okay, so I need a source of that. What about like a warded jar type source? Let's, uh, where am I? I'm getting turned around. Uh, okay, let's get some warded jar with that in. Uh, no jar there. Have I got a jar in here? Nope. Give me a jar very quickly. Because we're running out of time on the episode. Craft me, I don't know, ten of them. Start. Give me first one. Thank you. Warded jar. Okay. And then we'll put some of that in there. Thank you. 64 of it. That should do it. Let's see how it works. I will experiment a little bit more between episodes and tell you about it later. But if that goes in there, does it start wisping? Does it start feeding it wisp? Wispy? No? It doesn't? Okay. Well, I guess... I guess I'm going to have to think about this again. Maybe maybe if I put it right next to the thing. No? Maybe I've got to pipe it in. Hmm. Okay. Well, there's something for me to learn, something to figure out. It's, it's interesting, though. I am enjoying that bit. I'm going to mess around with it some more. But that is it for this episode, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Leave your comments down below. I will see you tomorrow for another Agrarian Skies 2. I nearly said, I nearly said, I will see you tomorrow for another Applied Energistics 2. But, well, I might be using some more Applied Energistics 2 tomorrow, but it's definitely Agrarian Skies 2 tomorrow. Thank you for watching. I will see you later. Goodbye.